Let's say you have a group photo and you want to blow it up and maybe have a solo photo of yourself for Instagram or LinkedIn, whatever you like. For that, select the rectangular marquee tool and hold the shift key. Make a square maybe around the face like so. Press C for the crop tool, hit enter or return twice. There you have it. But the problem is, it's super blurry. Who said the tools in Photoshop should be used the way they were intended? Of course not. So with the subject layer selected, press Ctrl or Command G to make a copy. Always. Now the resolution is very, very low right here. So first of all, let's go to image, image size. Let us increase it to 2000 by 2000 pixels. That's fine. Now you can choose resampling to be preserved details or preserved details enlargement or keep it automatic. That is up to you. Hit OK. Press Ctrl or Command 0 to fit the canvas to the screen. And now all you need to do is to go to filter before applying any filter. Do not forget convert for smart filters. This converts the layer into a smart object. Hit OK. And then go to filter waiting for it. Neural filters right here. Inside of it, just scroll down and turn on photo restoration. This was made for old photos, but maybe this will help here, right? as well. It's still processing on device, which is a good thing, but it doesn't do anything because enhance phase is just turned down. Turn it all the way up like so. And now have a look. This is crazy good. I know it is not perfect, but it tries to reconstruct the face right here. You might ask Unmesh, what about the other areas? Don't worry about that now. Now keep in mind, you may have to play with photo enhancement for some images. You may want to keep it zero, but for this one, it's fine. Now these adjustments right here are usually for old photo restoration. You can play with them if you want. Hit OK for now. And that's it. Here is the before and here is the after crazy. It might change the person just a little bit. So you may want to create a new layer and make some corrections with the remove tool if required. Now the big problem I see with this one is the harsh change between this good area and this bad area. How do we fix that? First of all, create a brand new merged layer. In other words, create a stamp visible layer by pressing Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E with the topmost layer selected. This creates a merged layer of everything that you see in the canvas right now. Then maybe with the remove tool right here, you can remove the additional side head. Hit enter or return. You want to make sure remove after each stroke is checked for faster workflow. In this case especially, and take care of this area. Now we need to be a little clever about fixing all of these issues. And one of the ways to do it is creating a shallow depth of field. Let's go to filter, convert for smart filters, hit OK for this one as well. Then go to filter, blur gallery, and you can use something like iris blur. Now let's make it slightly bigger than her head, like so. Bring it right about there and then play with the dots right here. Now wherever the point is, that's where the blur starts and towards the edge, the blur ends. In other words, if the blur is at 159, right here the blur is zero. Slowly and gradually it increases and towards the edge it is 159 and beyond that it is 159 or whatever number you choose there. And now you need to move these points independently. And how do we do that? Hold the Alt key or the Option key and just move them like so. And they move independently wonderfully. All right, now this is too much blur. Keep that in mind. Now we will decrease the blur and keep it somewhere around maybe 20. Now that's heavy handed, but for this example, that's fine. Hit OK. And there you have it fixed. Hi there, this is Unmesh and today I'm going to share with you five hidden Photoshop tools that you didn't know existed. Maybe, unless you're a pro. With one down, four to go. So without any further ado, let's get started. Before we move on to the second feature, I wanted to show you one more example. This is a screen capture from a video like this. It was shot in 1080p and that is why when we crop it, let us crop it with the rectangular marquee tool. Hold the shift key for a perfect square and let's move it with the space bar. As you're holding it, you can move this around. All right. Now, as you do move this around, you can press C for the crop tool, hit enter or return twice, and it's done. The first thing we need to do is to increase the resolution. So let's go to image, image size, and let us increase it to about 2000, right there, 2000 by 2000. Now we can try the same method, but since there is beard, there can be a little bit of an issue. Press Ctrl or Command J. Let's go to filter, Convert for smart filters, hit OK. Always do that so you can always go back and change the settings later. Now let's go to filter, neural filters inside of that. I already shared with you. Turn on photo restoration. And you want to make sure enhanced face is turned all the way up. Now you can increase it even more. Turn it all the way up and it can get better. That is up to you, but I'm going to leave it to about maybe 64. And photo enhancement, sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't. So I'm going to turn it down all the way to the left hand side and it 
just gets better in this case. As I told you, you don't always need this all the time. Hit OK once you're satisfied and it actually did a pretty amazing job. So here is the before. So I'm gonna zoom in a bit for you. And here is the after. It may not be natural looking, but it is something. The only problem with this method is that it unblurs the face that is fine, but not the other areas. And that is an issue. Now you can use other techniques in Photoshop to sharpen these areas like Smart Sharpen, High Pass. However, if you want the best results, you can consider using other independent programs actually made for this. The one that I use all the time is Topaz Photo AI. I'm still using the old version, by the way. I didn't, you know, spend the money to upgrade. Anyway, and there you go. It just instantly does it. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit and it hasn't even recovered the face. And the best part is it sharpens and brings back the details in all of these areas as well. That is cool. Now, once you do turn on recover face, it does bring back the face recreation that we see in Photoshop and it's way more natural. And if you look at all over the image, let me zoom out a bit. It's just a more natural result. You can even open all of these settings and increase it even more, the strength of face recovery right here. Maybe all the way up, and there you have it even sharper. Now, if you compare this result with that of Photoshop, it is just leagues apart, and still keep in mind, I haven't upgraded to the latest version. By the way, if you're considering getting one of these or upgrading, I'll link to Pass Photo AI in the description. My mom is an artist, and this painting is still in progress. I just clicked a snapshot for this tutorial. Now for a long time I saw my dad click photos of my mom's paintings and then he used to crop it this way. Pressed C for the crop tool and he would just crop it this way and then there were these spaces all around. Then what he would do, he would press Ctrl or Command T and try to stretch it. Right clicking on it, choosing distort and trying to stretch all of that. But you don't really have to do any of that. Photoshop can do that automatically and accurately for you. All you need to do is to select this tool, Perspective Crop Tool, and then click on the four points of the painting or whatever you want to straighten, like so. That's it. Now we can zoom in and make sure this is accurate and at the right place. Let's do the same for the rest of the areas. I usually try to keep it a little bit on the inside so that there are no gaps because these paintings are not always straight. There you go. Once you're done, you want to make sure all of these places are empty. You shouldn't have anything right there. Otherwise, it will try to stretch it or squish it. Just hit enter or return. There you go. Done. <laughs> Fantastic, isn't it? It straightened out the perspective just so accurately. Just look around the corners. Now, if you do see certain gaps, which you might see with paintings or papers or anything in the real world, you can crop it further by pressing C for the actual crop tool not the perspective one, and you can crop it further from right here, maybe a little bit from here as well. That one is from the easel. Hit enter or return, and it's perfectly fine. This is one of my favorite tools, and inside of it, there are just so many hidden gems. First of all, to turn this on, you need to go to File, Automate, and then Generator Plugins. Now, this has changed in the recent versions of Photoshop. If you're using an older version of Photoshop, you need to click on Image Assets. But right here, it is grayed out. How do we make it activated? Simple. Go to Photoshop, Settings. Inside of that, go to Plugins. And you want to make sure Enable Generator is checked. Hit OK. And then Restart Photoshop for that to be activated. Now that I've restarted Photoshop, let us open this PSD file inside of Photoshop. Now you'll see the magic. Let's go to File, Automate, Generator Plugins, and Image Assets. Make sure that is checked. Now when you go to File, Automate, Generator Plugins, you see this is checked. What happens now is that here are the text layers, right? Let us pick any of the text layers, like shoes. Where did that go? There it is. If we rename it by double-clicking and adding .png at the end, Watch what happens. If you go back to that folder, there is an assets folder created and inside of that we have shoes.png for that particular layer. And this works in real time. Let me share with you some more magic. You can have other formats too. If you group all of this, so select the first layer or group, hold the shift key, select the last one and then press control or command G. Now for the group, let's name it social post dot JPEG here. And there we have the entire image in JPEG. So cool. Now this goes way beyond that. You can also have multiple formats. Let's say you want a JPEG version. You also want a PNG version. Put comma and let's name it social.png. And now we have two of these. 
a PNG one, a JPEG one. Now you can take it even further. You can also have multiple sizes. So let's say for the text group, I have this text.png. So I have all the text in PNG format right here. Now let's say I want a 50% size of that. I'm gonna put comma and type in 50% text small dot png. Now we have two of these, text small and text big. This one as you can see is a bigger file, full version. And this one as you can see is 50% of that. And all of this live updates. So if I were to open this graphics layer and inside of that created a new layer and with the brush tool with a hard round brush, painted something in there around the corners. All of them will update accordingly. There you go. For these ones, the updates were applicable and it just updates. So definitely check out this feature, worth a try. For our next feature, we already knew how patterns are arranged. So if we were to create a pattern fill layer by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and choosing pattern, we know that this is how patterns are, this is how they are arranged. That's cool. But there's something more than that. So here's our subject underneath that we have a blank layer. Now let's go to edit, fill right here. Inside of the contents, you should be set at maybe foreground color or background color, or maybe content aware. You need to choose pattern from right here. And you can choose whatever pattern you want. So let's pick our grass or tree pattern. This is fine. Now, inside of that, you will have script. Check that. And there are several crazy ones to choose from. And there is brick wall, cross weave, random fill. A lot of people create some unique art for this. Let us go for a spiral and hit OK. And there you have the pattern arranged in a spiral. And you can change every aspect of it, like the scaling of the pattern or the spacing between the patterns. Now this is too far, this is too close. So I'm gonna go for maybe minus 10. Let's type in minus 10 and this is OK. Now once you're happy with this, you can always hit OK. Now there are color randomness too, you can play with this one as well brightness randomness to create some amazing randomness hit OK and there you have it filled now you might see that there are little gaps right in there so you want to make sure you go back by going to edit fill inside of that make sure spiral is checked and maybe you want to increase or decrease the spacing in this case we want to decrease it of course so let's set it to minus 23 and try increasing the pattern scale hit OK so much better. We don't see the gaps anymore. Now you can blur it, do whatever you want. I just wanted to share with you the spiral pattern. Now you might ask Gunmesh, why is this spiral pattern not visible right here in the left? Because it's a ghost. Well, uh, sometimes Photoshop acts that way. Create a new layer, delete it, and just it refreshes. That's fine. The last tool I wanted to share with you has helped me in the real world a lot with contrast. So usually when we increase contrast by clicking on the adjustment layer icon, choosing curves, and let us say we increase contrast like this. The problem is it crushes the darks. So how do we control that? There are several ways, but this tool is pretty handy. First of all, we need to make a selection based on the brightness levels. For it, press Command Option 2. That's it. This shortcut simply makes a selection based on channels. By holding the controller command, clicking here, it does the exact same thing, but just with a shortcut. Command option and two. And now with the selection active, click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. Have a look at the mask right here. It is the same image, but a luminosity mask of that. And now, when you increase the contrast, maybe something like this. See, it's not crushed anymore. So cool. You can also try changing the blend mode from normal to luminosity if you don't want colors to get affected. Sometimes it works, sometimes it creates some weird image, but usually you can try that. And in this case, it works. Good. There you go. Here is the before and here is the added contrast. Now some people like to use a mask and like to work this way and that is a great tool. However, if you ask me, I like to work absolutely non-destructively as much as possible. So this mask is not really required. So I'm just going to drag it and drop it into the trash can. Like so. Instead of that, just double click on the right hand side of the layer and just take it away from the dark areas using Blendif by taking the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. But this is harsh, so hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart and take it all the way apart. Same effect. Hit OK. 
there you have it and you don't have to worry about any mask and you have so much flexibility so that's pretty much it for this video let me know which tip was your favorite and which one you would be using in your day-to-day -day workflow or maybe sometimes i hope you enjoyed this video and if you did make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips tricks or tutorials i would like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and incredible people for supporting pix imperfect on patreon and making videos like this possible thank you so much for watching i'll see you in my next one until then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.